Hey guys, welcome back to Tommy Legends and once again, thank you for stopping by. So in this video, I've called it a how-to video, but um, I'm by no means an expert. So this is going to be more of a case of me sort of finding my way. Um, so we finished the um, Subaru Impreza 1997 Colin McRae World Rally Car. Ba boom looks absolutely stunning. If you've not checked that video out, please do. Um, now this, this shell right now is sat on the TBO1 chassis, um, which comes with a, a polycarbonate dust cover and it has a small driver unit fitted on, which looks awesome on the TBO1. Um, but this is, this will actually run on my TTO2 chassis. So it needs a driver figure or a driver cockpit. So here we have it, a boom. First time I've had one of these, so I, I, I am a little bit excited. So straight off the bat, it's called a 110th RC Rally cockpit set, and it's um, it's a hop-up option, OP1491, um, 5491, should you want to get one. Um, get these on readily, readily, uh, readily available on eBay. Um, they're around about 15 to 20 pounds, depending where you can get. Now this is, as I say, the rally version, so it comes with this, this mould of the driver and the co-driver. Um, they actually do single seated cockpits as well for like Le Mans style um, or just general saloon cars. Um, very, very, very cool piece of kit. If you've not seen one before, um, it really does transform these shells just to the next level. Um, so as I say, you get the actual full mould of the cockpit. Now it actually fills a full car, that's what's awesome. On the TBO1, it's just a, a small unit. Um, and from the size, it looks awesome. But when you're looking at like this angle, I'm looking in all the front um, where the dashboard would be isn't there. But on this, you get the full unit. With inside that, you get the two driver's helmets, your steering wheel, gear stick, all the screws to put the heads on. And then you also get the adjustment fits that um, this actually velcros into the shell um, when you finally position it. Um, but it also comes with spacers as well, depending on what shell you've got. Um, it doesn't say it's for a 190mm shell, so I'm guessing, and I could be wrong, with the spacers and sponges supplied, it may well do a 200mm shell. But again, that's a guess. All my shells are 190 um, I believe that these do fit as standard the majority of Tamiya shells, but I have seen where people have had to cut certain back end sections out um, to get it mounted correctly. So I don't know if we're going to have any of that work to do to get it into the Subaru. So let's open this bad boy up and see what we get for our money. I've also, just while I'm doing this, I've also got a, I've taken my cockpit out of my Ford Escort Cosworth to show you one painting. Right, let's see what we get. So that's that's your mould. It's very lightweight. Um, you probably can't see this on camera, but there's a big cut line all the way around here, um, which you need to do, and then the Velcro just goes on either side. Pretty cool. Very lightweight, as I said. So we get that. We get the standard um, driver's helmets, set of two. As I said, there is a steering wheel on there and a gear stick. And you get your little parts bag so we get the two screws to put the driver together we get two velcro straps which we just cut in half because it doesn't take much to hold these in and then you get these foam um, adjusters which are, um, don't know how they work um, we'll have we'll come to that at the end and you also get which I think is pretty cool a little set of decals for the dashboard so you get your, your, your main dashboard a couple of other parts some clocks here and then these four yellow things um, are actually for the seat belts, which is a pretty cool effect because obviously once you paint the seat belt, whatever colour you choose, if you put those over the top, it kind of fixes to what the Recaro seat is on the mould and then bring it down and it's a nice touch. Um, I'm thinking straight away, because I've seen others do it, but once these yellow seat belt de decals are on, you can get, I've got some sort of small spare decals but have just been left over from other jobs so if I can get some like black writing on there of some kind that'll that'll just add a load of detail to it 
So that's cool. And then obviously we get the instructions, which as you would expect, are very, very straightforward. It's actually the one in one side. So mega cool. Now, as I say, I've not done one of these before. Now, this is basically a blank canvas and it's as much detail as you want to put into it. Now, for me, the starting point with these is what base colour do you want? I'm, I've made up my mind because the Subarus of the dark blue PS16, I, I want the, the base colour to be black. Um, I've seen them done in white and grey and silver and they all look they all look equally as good. It's just personal preference. Um, you could, if you really wanted to save time, you, do, you wouldn't even have to do a base colour. You could just paint the detail on and it'd still look great. Um, but as I say, for me, because you see all the dashboard and what have you, um, this all has to be black. Um, I'm going to use PS paints. Now, obviously, PS is um, basically a matte finish and it becomes gloss because of the shell. So when you do spray PS onto here, it's going to look like a sort of matte Maybe maybe satin finish. Looks cool. Um, I'll show you the one I've taken out. So this is out of my Escort Cosa. Now, this looks pretty good actually. I've not touched this yet. Uh, and there's not a great deal to do with it. Probably can't see. Well, I'll, I'll zoom in and we'll come closer to this. But um, the, the main problem for me is this has been brush painted. Now, this is a, a genuine cockpit from back in the day. This was model number. Let me get this right. 58112 um, from, oh my goodness, I think it was from 97 or 98. So this has got a lot of age through it. Um, but whoever did this brushed this grey on. Um, and when you see it close up, you'll see it doesn't look the best. I mean, once it's in the car, you don't notice. But just spraying it over the base colour, in my opinion, is just the best way to do it. Um, and they've not gone for a great bit of detail, they've not done a lot of detail on the rest of it. The, the drivers are super cool, they look great, um, sorry from that angle. So the drivers themselves look pretty cool and all the right sort of paint work's done. Um, but here you can do a lot more detail if you want to and I'm, I'm going to give it a go. Um, just on this particular one, what I will do when I come to do this car, I will take the driver's heads off and we'll, we'll sand these joints down and we'll blast them over with a brilliant white colour um, because they're, they're kind of showing the rage. Um, and I'll also, the spare wheel on the mould, they've actually done the sort of alloy in silver, um, which is a little bit daft really because the car has white alloy wheels. So what I will do is I'll blast this over, well not blast, I'll, I'll brush paint this in white and then on the, the alloy spokes or whatever you want to call them, the holes, I'll just go over those in black um, and that'll, that'll be that one done. But anyway, that's a different video. So let's figure out how we're going to do this. So to save time, I'm going to use um, the Tamiya masking tape. This is the thicky stuff I've got, I think it's 16 mil and I'm just gonna go over um, all the driver's figures right down to the sort of base. I'm gonna cover the um, seats, the Recaro back of the seats, and that's probably it. Just those two sections will be fully masked, and then I'm gonna blast it over in black, um, which I think, is it black is PS1, I believe. I might be wrong, PS1, PS2. PS1's white, so it's PS2. Um, so we'll, once we'll mask it, we'll blast it over and then we'll come back to it then and then we'll start figuring out the detail. Um, as I say, this, these, there's a, you can put a lot of effort into these if you've got the skills and they look absolutely epic. But I would also say, for the sort of non-painters out there as such, um, just getting some colour on these things and, and doing the best you can, it'll still look class in your shell, you know, it'll still really improve the look of the car itself. Um, so I think that's it. What we'll do is I'll, I'll cut this, I'll cut the cut lines out and then I'll, I'll mask that up um, and then we'll blast it over in black and then we'll come back to this uh, and we'll start, we'll start talking about the detail and the different colours I'm going to use and sort of the, the plan that's in my head of how this is going to look. So as I always say, let's get cracking. 
Right guys, so I've just masked the two drivers, which took a bit of time, but it's just going to save me some time in the long run. Um, it's really important that the drivers are a brilliant white for me. So I didn't want to blast it over in black and then the white would be slightly darker or I didn't need to apply more coats. So I've took the time to do that, um, but I'm quite happy with the rest of that cockpit to um, be black. And I've just done the driver's um, faces and sort of helmet rim as well, just to save me a bit of time. So um, now we'll go use PS5 and get that blasted over and also, sorry, TS26 for the helmets. Right, so that's it. I just need to let it it's, it's dry, but probably just let it harden. Um, as I say, that's um, PS paint, and it's come up a treat, to be honest. Looks good. Um, helmets, as I say, TS paint, they look good. So, yeah, again, I, what I'm thinking is, it might sound a bit pathetic, but it's a little bit overwhelming, because there's, there's that much detail, and obviously it's up to you how much you put in. And it's kind of knowing where to start. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the silver stuff first. So I've got this silver paint. Uh, my idea was, let's try, try to get this in the correct light so you can see the struts. So I want these, this, the Recaro seats, oh, put my finger in the way. The Recaro, all the rear seat in silver and then these, I um, don't know what you'd call them, strengthening struts or whatever the rally car has. Um, so I want to do all them in silver. These are going to, these rims are going to be silver. This gets cut out for your body parts. Um, this box here, I'll do in silver. Um, I'll probably do that as well, whatever it is, just as a bit of detail. Um, and then once I've got that, that's pretty much it for the front. Or is it? Let me think. No, probably the handbrake and the um, gear stick I'll do in silver as well. And that'll be, that'll be all the silver. And then what I'll do is... I'll do the uh, driver's figures in white and then I'll touch the black to white up once that hardens. So I'll come back when I've got that done. Well guys, I can honestly say this is my least favourite Tamiya job I've ever done. Um, and it's just down to my painting skills. Um, finding it very tricky. Um, obviously, probably on camera from a distance, it'll, it will look better than it is. I've got a lot of touch up to do, um, but that's why obviously I went black because it's dead easy to get straight black lines. Um, so I'm gonna have to go over that um, and straighten these up as well. These are not great, but I will get them nice and sharp when I do the black. Obviously, as I said, this, is, this center section's gotta be cut out for the body parts. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it at that for now uh, and let it harden. I've not done the drivers in white yet. Um, but as you can see, I've done the flesh colour helmets, his co-pilot's hands. I've put um, red cuffs on. Um, and obviously the red seat belts. And I've put a little bit of red in there just to sort of add a little bit of colour. Um, next up, um, I've, I really need to decide what colours to use again. Oh, and as you can see, I've done all the, um, the silver. Um, so obviously I've got this I've got this full wheel to paint in white. Uh, and on, as I say, we've got the drivers to do. Um, I think probably white is the next colour to put on. Um, and then once we've got that done, I mean that'll basically be the co-pilot almost finished, apart from some more silver and black on the buckles. Um, I've got to decide what colour gloves to give the driver, what colour to do a steering wheel. Um, so there's little things like that to figure out, but that's why I'm just going to do it a step at a time. Um, and as I say, we'll go with white next. Um, obviously, from a distance, it's it's looking pretty cool, but it definitely does need the brilliant sort of white putting on. Um, as I say, there's some yellow decals to go on the top of these red seat belts, which will add a nice bit of yellow to it. Um, I might even mix some yellow up and do the gloves yellow. It's, I don't know, do drivers have yellow gloves? I don't know if they do, but it yellow would look nice in there. It'd really brighten it up. I might do that. In fact, I've got some TS yellow that I used on the lunchbox. It's kind of a darker yellow, but that might look pretty cool on the gloves. Anyway, uh, I'm going to have a little break from it now, and then we'll come back to it once it's hardened and do the next bit. Right, bit more work done. It's got a yellowish steering wheel, red gear stick. These are both in position now. 
Uh, I've done some of the silver on the seat belts. Um, what else? Back wheel, but that needs uh, another um, layer of paint when it dries. I've gone over the edges now and made them a bit sharper. Um, and I need to retrim these. I've just cut them out roughly with scissors at the moment. Um, but I'm not going to really come. I'm going to wait until I get it in the shell to do the next bit. Put a bit of detail on the helmets. Um, so that's about as far as I can go at the moment. Um, I did start to paint the driver co pilot's book, his notes, but I didn't like the colour, so I wiped it off and it's taken some of the black off. So um, I'll have to revisit that. I'm not too sure about that colour. It needs to be a bright colour because it's quite a large section. Um, so that's about it. I'll let it harden again. Um, and then the next stage is just to put some sort of black detail onto those seat belt, um, the silver bits. And that's about it really, that's about my limit I think. Maybe then we'll have a look at getting the decals on as well. Right, that's pretty much it done. Um, as always with these things, from a distance it looks pretty cool, but as I say, my painting skills are not good enough to do these things full justice. Um, but as I say, it's, uh, it's not bad at all. I put some little Pro Drive decals on the helmet that I had left over. Um, the decals that you get with this set make a, a nice difference. Those yellows, those yellow things on the seat belts are decals and they look pretty cool. Um, I put a little bit more detail on the back. Um, I still got to trim that yet, um, which we'll do when we um, start to fit it onto, into the shell. Uh, and I also need to put the black into the spokes on the wheel. Um, trying to show you the, there you go, the cockpit decals for the gauges. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I think all in all, it's turned out okay. Um, so next stage now is to get the shell um, and let's figure out how this fits in. Right, so it's first time at looking how it fits in the actual shell. So obviously these two cutouts have to line up with the rear body posts. Um, so you, it does give you a lot of leeway. I don't know if that's coming on camera, but that's, it can go as far forward as that and as far back as that. Now, straight away, I can see the front mounting body posts are going to be an issue, so I am going to have to do some work and do some cutouts on here. Um, secondly, there's a large gap, of, there's a large space. So, obviously, with the kit itself, it comes with these, um, which I presume what I'll do is I'll cut to length and cut in half. Um, and that'll pack that out. May have to use two. Difficult to sort of gauge. Yeah, it's going to need probably two lots. So I think the first thing I'll do, I'll, I'll cut these to size and then we'll get the width done correctly first because obviously we've got to allow for the width of the Velcro as well. Um, so I think we'll just fit one of these and then we'll sort of judge it and then go from there. Um, the second issue you have is then you've got to kind of line it up before you stick it in. Now, obviously it's how far forward you want the drivers. So let me just put those body posts back. So if I put it to its very back, it makes those things look like six by nine speakers on a parcel shelf. Um, and then you get kind of the right, you see that driver's too far forward for me. So we're going to have to really line it up to where, where it's supposed to go. So there's a little bit of work involved, so let's get the width done first. Right, I've put one on either side, I'll show you it, like that. I've not cut it yet, I've trimmed it, but um, that really does take you up. Um, Got to be very careful that you don't push the sides out as well. Um, but as it sits further down towards the roof, yeah, you can feel it has got a little bit of gap, which the Velcro will take up, which is ideal. So I'm happy with that width. So I'll just trim that off um, either side for excess. And then we'll get the chassis um, and start just having a look before we make any cuts. So this is a little bit more involved than I expected. So this is a TBO1 chassis. Now I want this shell, um, although it's eventually going on a TTO2, I want it to be able to fit on this chassis too. Um, 
which you should be able to. So you clear those body pins and have to push it forward to clear the front body post just to sort of get it set roughly. And then when the shell goes on, it's like that. But as you can see, it's not quite as straightforward as you think. So by doing it this way, you can kind of make it feel, get its own, um, what do you call it, find its own fit. But for me, the drivers are too far forward like that. And the issue I have there is the, the, the cockpit is as far back as it'll go with the standard cutouts. So I am gonna have to open them up, which is a real shame because if I do that, I might have to cut, you can't really see. That's as far back as it'll go. Um, and I'm gonna end up having to cut some of the back end off to allow that to sit further back, which is a shame. So this is gonna take a little bit more work than I thought. Right, so what I've had to do is put two extra holes in the cockpit. Um, I mean, I, to be fair, I should have checked this at the beginning. So that now fits like that. And then when we put the shell on. So we've got the drivers roughly in the right position now. Um, but a couple of issues. Now, obviously the cockpit is slanted down now so it's got plenty of room to lift at the front once I tape it but the back I don't know if this will come across on camera so if I can just move it a little bit closer so when I press down you can see it's pressing down it's bending the cockpit down so I'm gonna to have to cut the cockpit all the way around to match this window um, because at that pressure once I put the body clips on and the sticky tapes in that pressure is just gonna move i think what i might do is just get the um velcro in um just so i can get the driver um horizontal in the shell um before i chop any of that back end off it's one of those occasions isn't it measure twice cut once so um yeah let's get the velcro in Right guys, that's it in, in position. Um, there's a lot of messing around to get these lined up. Um, I didn't actually expect it. Um, I, I actually assumed that because the Scooby is such a sort of long shell that the cockpit would just fit perfectly, but uh, obviously it doesn't. So as you can see, I've cut it around here. Now I will trim this up in the future. Um, I may have to do something, just cut some more corners off because um, as you, when I put it on the bot, on the chassis, you'll see why. So anyway, that's Velcroed in. It does come off quite easily and it doesn't drag the Velcro off the shell, which I was kind of worried about. Um, I've also cut these little flanges out because obviously the shell sat on body clips and it needs to get past this and it was struggling a little bit. So all you need to do now is just give it a little bit of a wiggle on the back that goes there and that goes there so as you can see the drivers are in position but front sits perfectly but the back is pushing down as i said on those back bits it's there's not a lot of pressure that's it fully down um but it's not ideal obviously body clips will hold it down but it will be putting a little bit of pressure on the velcro which i don't really want um so i think that's pretty much it i'll get the body clips on now Right, that's it with the body clips on. Um, as I say, it looks pretty cool. It's it's nice because it obviously fills that cockpit fully up. Um, I'll just show you. So obviously you don't get any gaps in the front. And I've lined that back up best I can for now. But I will do some extra work on that in the future. But... Um, yeah, I'm reasonably happy with that. And she's done. Um, I've got to be honest, far more work involved than I anticipated at the beginning. Um, yeah, it's quite involved to do. Now, obviously, it's my first one. And as I'm sat here right now, I'm thinking to myself, it'll be my last one. Um, but as somebody said on Instagram, um, when I posted a picture of it, when you're doing something, 
for the first time, everything seems tricky. Obviously when you come to do a second one, you'll I'll know the mistakes I made on the first one. Um, but yeah, we've got to be happy with that. But it's been a couple of days to get it done. Um, I do I do like how it fills the full area up, so there's, there's going to be no wiring or anything showing when I when I run it, uh, and it makes the shell a lot more solid. Obviously, it's not nearly as flexible. Um, I will have to do a bit more work just to tidy that back end up, um, which is no biggie, I guess, because um, it is pressing down on those body clips slightly. But I mean, you can see it's moving, so it's not really the end of the world. Um, Painting wise, as I always say, I am no painter. Um, it, it looks okay, don't get me wrong, but when you go close up, you see, I follow a lot of people on social media who actually can paint really well, and when you see their work, and then you try to sort of replicate it yourself and just get paint, you know, straight brush lines and stuff, and then I struggle. And it's like, ah, and, it, and I had a bit of a downer on it, thinking, yeah, it looks a bit pants. But I have to say, as I said right in the beginning, if you don't have to have top-notch painting skills for these cockpits. Because when it's in there, you don't see much of it. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of a thing that's just hitting me at the moment. All that work I spent on painting the cockpit and, and going over a little bit to try to correct the best I could. And then when it's in there... You really don't see it's, it's two drivers' helmets, and uh, anyway, it's as I always say, it's um, it's another job ticked off my sort of bucket list of jobs that I always wanted to try. Whether I'll do another, I've got to be honest. Right now, I don't think I would. Um, but I suppose if you know, if if I think they're a must if you're collecting the saloon Tamiya cars, I really do. Um, and there's different styles of canopies that you cock sorry cockpits that you can get. Um, but anyway, it's done. I don't know how long this video's been. It seems like it's a lifetime. I'll try to make it as short as I can. Um, just make sure. Yeah, I didn't even check. Make sure the clearances were cool, but they are. So yeah, I'm glad that one's done. That's that's all I can say on that. Um, what's next for this is to get it running. Now obviously because the shell's so nice it's just going to be a tarmac run um, which will be cool. Not too sure what chassis we'll use. If we'll, It's on the TBO one. I might stick it back on the TTO2 although that chassis needs a lot of work. Um, but yeah that's, that's that pretty much finished now. Um, right I'm rattling on. If you are thinking of doing one of these, I hope this video helps, but what I will say straight away, there are far better videos out there of how to do these properly. Um, but I think that's the beauty of my channel, that we just do things for the first time and we make mistakes and it's trial and error. We're no experts by any means. Um, but anyway, as I say, I hope it helped. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's really appreciated. If you haven't already, if you could please consider subscribing, and uh, like, comment and smash that notification bell for our weekly videos. That would be much appreciated. And as always guys, happy seeing.